demo of the software. So we'll talk about game setup, how you can enter season stats and create seasons, teams, and rosters within the software. We'll go through the play-by-play -play entry as well. So how you can actually uh, run the software on a game, game day basis. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can use the software after you've gone through a game. So you can create season reports and team reports. Reports, um, basic information so you can actually see the way that the software is uh, brought in your statistics information from the program. And we'll talk a little bit about some troubleshooting, so how you can see if there's issues with your system um, not providing the correct stats or you're not seeing stats out to your displays at any time, and the kind of steps you can go through to troubleshoot those at any time. And then we'll talk about some customer support resources. So since DAC offers lots of different resources and lots of different things for our actual DAC stats software um, and our programs and our solutions, we'll talk about some of those resources as well. Um, after we do a demo of the software, we'll have plenty of time for questions and questions at the end as well. So uh, feel free to let me know anytime during the presentation if you have any questions. Um, so after this training, uh, we're just hoping to give you kind of a solid basis for understanding our DocStats software, understanding the way that you would operate it and kind of start from scratch, essentially, um, as well as how it connects into your larger Doctronic system. So here's a few things that we're just kind of hoping that we can have you take away from it once we get through the end of this webinar. So starting off with just kind of a basic introduction, uh, our DACSTATS base wall is a piece of software that allows for your detailed tracking of statistics in your play-by-play -play entry. Um, so it offers you some different options for how you can actually keep track of game day statistics, how you can operate during a game. Um, and it also offers a few different options for how you can create game day reports, how you can track your game season statistics, um, and kind of keeping track of all of that so you can see as your statistics progress throughout the season. So whenever your system is first set up, your Dactronics DACSTAT software is going to be installed on a computer or a laptop uh, and connected into your Dactronics network to allow it to feed your displays, uh, feed if you have an in-house TV system, or to outside sources. So it can be used to feed statistics to a variety of different sources. Um, if you're connecting it to a Dactronics display, it's usually just connected via a network cable into your Dactronics router that allows it to feed the actual information out to your Dactronics displays. Um, it could be installed on its own computer, so you may have a separate DACStats laptop or a desktop computer just used for DACStats and connected to the rest of the system um, via the network or it could be installed or on another computer in the system. Um, so uh, it could be on your uh, DSTI computer, which is your Dactronic scoring and timing interface computer, um, or another computer in the Dactronic system. Um, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, jump right into the software. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and open up our Dactat software and start off with just a basic overview of the actual program, um, how you can use it, and then again, if there's any questions throughout, just feel free to let me know. Um, so starting off with just a basic overview of the user interface, this is what DACSAS is gonna look like when you first open it up. Um, you may not see uh, any games in here if you haven't configured any games. If you don't have a season configured, it may just be completely blank. Um, so we'll just go through the kind of different menus and the parts of the interface before you actually get in and start jumping into uh, game day play-by-play uh, -play entry. So the menus that you have along the top, you have your basic file menu, which like you might expect, allows you to control the different parts of the software. You can create new games, open up existing games. This allows you to close out of your games. Uh, this is also the menu we're going to be using to uh, import and export game information. So if you have information coming from a different DACSTATS computer or if it's coming from an outside source. So for example, we'll go through importing in game stats and season stats from our stat crew software. So if you have stat crew, if you're on an NCAA site, um, this is the menu you're going to use to import those stats from stat crew. The configuration menu is what you're going to use to uh, essentially set up the program. It's where you can configure teams and your rosters, the season essentially, um, and allows you to do all of this uh, configurations before a game starts, as well as changing things around during a game as well. This also offers some basic customizations of the program, so you can change things like colors or whether you want it to start the interface as soon as you start a game. So, um, and we'll go through all of these in a little more detail in a second as well. Um, 
so the next one, our edit menu, is what's actually going to allow you to edit uh, your stats within the game. So once you have a game started, it'll give you the option to um, make any changes if you need to edit plays or anything like that. This is the menu, menu that you're going to be using for most of that. Um, it will be grayed out unless there's something that it's valid uh, for you to do during that point in the game. So for example, since we don't have a game started yet, it's not going to give us option to edit anything. Um, similarly, it's only going to give you the option to edit things that are valid at that particular time. So um, if you don't have plays entered, it won't allow you to edit plays or rebuild stats, um, but it will allow you to do things like edit pitch count and stuff like that um, whenever it actually makes sense during the actual game itself. Um, the next one, your game control, is going to be for uh, if you need to end a game, if you want to close out of a game, um, especially if you uh, don't get to the end or you have a weather delay or something like that. These game control options just offer you some um, quick starting and stopping of the game um, timeouts, um, as well as allowing you to export um, the actual game. So if you need to move it to a different DAX stats computer or something like that, these game control buttons will allow you to do that. The view tab is just for allowing you to change how the interface itself looks. So you can choose whether you have the toolbar, this toolbar along the top selected here, um, the Twitter, if you have the option to, you have the option to set up Twitter where it automatically tweets out uh, certain intervals during the game, such as after every score or after every inning. You can choose whether that Twitter bar is selected and whether that's on or not, as well as the other parts of the toolbar. This is also where you're going to change the actual play-by-play -play entry during your game. So if you want to have your entry move from play-by-play -play and then you decide you want to just enter box score instead, um, you can use the view tab to switch between those views very quickly as well as changing between if you want to see just home team or visiting team in your box score entry. It also gives you keyboard shortcuts. So this program does have lots of options for how you can do keyboard shortcuts to make your game entry quite a bit quicker, um, especially when you're in the fast paced game environment um, using some of these keyboard shortcuts. And I'll go through where you can find some of those as well. Um, so they'll either be listed on the side of the menu or when we get in into the interface later. Um, there's different keyboard shortcuts that correspond to different plays and all of that. So that can be really helpful whenever you're actually in the middle of a game, uh, knowing where those shortcuts are and the easiest way to kind of change between things pretty quickly. WebSync is if you have uh, the WebSync interface available, if it's available through your league, uh, essentially it just allows you to upload a game to a server so that way you can um, retrieve all of the game information from the rest of your league. You can also download other teams information. So if your visiting team is using the WebSync profile, um, you can download their roster um, as well as your roster, upload them to that web uh, server. So that way you have access to it. Um, just depends on whether that's available through your league or not. It's just another um, piece that you would have a profile. And so you do that initial setup here within this, uh, within this menu right here. Similarly, if you use webcast to um, cast an online stats interface, this is where you can start and stop that. This is also where you would configure so you can set, say exactly where that web case is, webcast is actually being sent to. The help menu gives you a couple of different options. It gives you a couple of PDF files of the user manual as well as the quick start guide. Um, both of these are available in our Adobe Connect meeting. So just really depends on where it's easiest for you to access them from. Um, if you already have them downloaded to your computer or if you just need to quickly access them, if you have the DAX stats program open, you can use this help menu. Um, then the about DAX stats baseball just gives you basic program information tells you the kind of um, version number and that sort of thing of what you're running on the program. Uh, so just continuing through the rest of the interface, when you first open up the DAX stats program, um, like I said, this is just a uh, basic toolbar file menu along the top, allows you to create new games and open up existing games. Um, you don't have to have that turned on, just depends on whether you want to load your games from here or from within the file menu. Either option will do the same thing. The season drop down allows you to quickly switch between seasons. Um, this is where we're going to be adding in our new season. So if you want to create a new season completely from scratch, this is where you would start off with. Um, if you want to change between different seasons, um, just selecting them in the drop down 
is the easiest option right here. You also can change which is going to be set as your default season. So if you're selected on one that's not currently set as the default, set to default will be your default season. So whenever you first open up the program, that's the season that's going to load. Um, allows you to quickly enter um, into uh, the season and start your game pretty quickly. Uh, similarly with your teams, this team dropdown allows you to select a team uh, that's actually configured and added into that season. Um, and then you can select a default team as well. So you can make sure that you're on your current season and your current team as your default. Um, and then that would be something that would show up automatically as soon as you first enter in the program. You won't have to click through those drop downs every time. Uh, so the next piece of this, just going through the rest of these before we actually start creating seasons and adding in our teams, um, you do have a roster that will show up here depending on which team you've selected. So this is where you can go in and edit your roster. You can also, if you're connected to webcast, this download rod, uh, this down, or sorry, if you're connected to web sync, um, download roster gives you the option to download the roster that's been uploaded to that web sync site, especially if you have this for like, um, a, your visiting team or something like that, you can just quickly download that roster so you're not having to manually enter in all of your players. Your schedule is where you're going to actually be opening up the game. So you can add as many games in here in advance of your schedule as you want. So that way you're ready to uh, start each game as you go through the season, or you can create them every time you open up the DAC Stats program. You can create a new game um, just depending on the way you want to have it um, set up. It will tell you the play-by-play, -play, uh, the game entry that has been selected for that particular game. So it'll either show play-by-play -play complete if it's finished a game and it's been set up in play-by-play -play entry. Um, it may tell you box totals um, or box per game, depending on which one of these has been selected as the way that you're actually entering the stats. Um, and it'll tell you whether it's been complete or incomplete. So an incomplete game tells you that it's not at the end of the actual game. The other pieces of this, again, if you have the web sync set up as part of your league, um, you'd be allowed to, you can configure your profile in the web sync menu up here at the top, then allows you to select your profile and then the passwords, that way you can automatically sync your game to the web sync platform. The common tasks down here in the bottom give you a few different options that um, are quick ways of accessing uh, things that you would do through the DAX stat system. So, the print season reports, like it sounds, allows you to uh, grab quick reports of all of your season or game information, uh, team information, just depending on what all you want to see. We'll go through these after we go, get through our kind of game entry, um, seeing the types of reports that you can use uh, and kind of print out of this program. Uh, similarly, you can import and export games. So if you have a game on an existing DACSATS computer and you want to move to a different computer, um, you can use these options to quickly import and export your games. Um, so we'll go ahead and just start off. We'll go ahead and configure a new season, um, and then I'll show you how to either create new teams or import teams if you're using something like importing from your stat crew program. So if you have a stat crew laptop set up um, and you want to import your season stats, that way you don't have to enter everything manually. Um, that's one option that we'll go through. So again, you can either choose in the drop down which season you're wanting to be on, um, or if you go to this configure option right here, um, the same pop-up is going to be available if you go to the configure menu and go to configure season. So just whichever one you want to do to configure a season, the same for teams and rosters as well. So they'll do the same thing essentially um, if you're wanting to change things around like while you're in the game or something like that. Um, so you have the option to edit existing seasons and delete them out. So if you don't want to have an old season in there, um, you can clear them out as often as you want to. Um, adding a new season gives you all of the options. So you can title your new season um, as well as it's going to give you the option to ask what your default play entry mode is. Um, this can obviously be changed while you're in the game, but it uh, just depends on what the easiest way for you to actually enter plays is. If you want to do it by box score and type in your plays and your stats, um, or if you want to do by play-by-play -play mode um, and enter each play individually, either of those options, um, you can choose just the default entry mode. So that way, as soon as you start a new game within this season, it'll choose which one it kind of sets in. Um, and again, that can, that can be changed during a game as well. Rules file allows you to choose which uh, venue you're actually working at. So depending on whether you're uh, like at an NCAA school, running baseball or softball, choosing the rules for the course, the rules file that corresponds to that particular sport. So that way, you know, you have um, all of the correct information. Um, like, for example, you won't have 
um, designated hitter designated hitter for softball. Um, so just making sure that you select the correct one of those for your actual individual season, depending on which one that you're controlling. Um, and then your default gender, again, if you're uh, running baseball or softball, just choosing which one of those um, it'll default to. Um, that can be changed around, again, depending on the actual game and the team. Um, but this is just what it'll default to whenever you create a new team within this actual season. Um, so if we have our team set up. Um, we're not going to worry about setting up a web sync profile. Again, if you have web sync set up, you'll have the actual uh, login information that you can set up that profile with as soon as you go ahead and create a season. Um, once you have a actual season set up, you can always go in and delete out old seasons. Um, you can do, you can add tournaments to your season as well. So if you want to add a particular number of games to a tournament, um, or if you just want to do them as individual games, um, either option you would have. Utilities just give you some option to back up your season. Um, so that way, if you have anything um, problem with the computer or something goes down, you have access to a backup or you need to switch between computers quickly. Um, it really is up to you how often you want to back up. Um, if you want to back up all of your games so that you have access to them and you're needing to use them for reports, um, or if you're not really accessing them after a game, um, it may not be as necessary to worry about backing up um, to an external drive or anything like that. So up to you um, once that's kind of first been created. So. Um, once we have a new season created, uh, we can go into our training option and we can go ahead and add teams to that. Um, since we don't have any teams set up um, within this particular season, we can go to the configuration and either add new teams, we can import teams um, from existing seasons. So um, if I have teams that I've, uh, if I want to go in and add a completely new team, I can go in and add new, it gives me the option to go in and start completely from scratch so I can add uh, new teams, put in as much information here as you want. So um, making sure that you keep track of uh, team location is going to be obviously the most important, tells you the actual team name. Print name is the name that's going to actually show up whenever you're uh, sending the statistics information. Um, similarly, the abbreviation is going to be sent um, like as part of your real-time data that gets sent out to your displays. So depending on exactly how much you're wanting to bring in and how much you're actually displaying out, um, you can fill out as much of this or as little as you want. So like you don't necessarily have to fill out the stadium unless you're going to be sending that out to the displays as well. So um, it's always important to note that anything that you fill out here in this program is something that you also have the capability to send to the displays. So um, whenever you're creating uh, whatever actual presentations are being created to send out to your displays. If you have a kind of um, game setup uh, presentation that gets sent out to uh, your video boards, um, you want to make sure that the information that is being displayed is something that you've actually entered in the DAC stats program. So um, we'll get into this more kind of whenever you get into uh, players and that sort of thing, uh, the actual types of information that you may be um, needing to enter uh, may not be something that you're using out to the boards. Um, or maybe something that uh, you're choosing to send out to the displays, but you haven't actually typed in, so you wouldn't have access to those. Um, so like I said, you can go in and enter your new team from within here. Um, you can go in and type all of these out. Uh, what we're gonna do first is go ahead and practice uh, importing. I'll show you how to import, whether it's coming from the DAC Stats program, so if you have an existing team, um, or if it's coming from an outside program like Stat Crew. So we'll actually close out of this first. Um, so our first option would be we go up to the file menu um, and bring in import season stats allows you to choose season stats files that come from an outside program as long as it's set up as an XML file. Um, so you would choose in here is going to give you a few different lists at the top it actually tells you the way that it should be brought out. So um, it tells you exactly how you can import in all of those files. So this is how you would bring in if you have season stats that come from your stat crew computer. Um, and I know that this is pretty um, necessary on most. Uh, college sites. If you have a Stat Crew laptop, um, you don't want to have to enter those stats all the time. Uh, so the Stat Crew has an option to ex export their game files, um, and you can bring those in so that way you have access to all of your season stats. Um, so I'll go through and show you how we would be using those. Um, uh, so we'll go ahead and get into our new season um, as well as so we'll select our training season right here. These little dots allow you to select which one of your um, 
files you want to bring in. So you can choose where you've loaded your files anywhere on the computer. Just go ahead and browse to them. Um, so we'll go ahead and browse to just these are files that have been exported from the stack crew computer um, and all of these uh, will go through our Dactronic support links. Um, stack crew has a um, web support that tells you exactly how to export these files as well. So if your stack crew operator um, or if it's you doesn't know how to do those, uh, you can access those stack crew links as well to see how to actually export these files so you have access to them after every game. Um, so we'll go in and choose our XML file that is set up with our home stats. Uh, and do the same thing for your guest stats as well, depending on what all you're bringing in. Opening up those. Uh, you can choose the actual mode that you're bringing in. So if you want to do it as tournament or just default, it's going to be just one game. Um, and then you can choose from within there if you want to add in additional games. It's going to ask you whenever you first uh, import in any season statistics, uh, whether it has existing teams that it needs to associate these files with. So um, if we have teams already added to this season, um, it's going to look for a team that matches the team that's in this XML file. Um, so if you have a team location down here, so if it's your home team and you've already set up the season to have your home team, you would just select down in the list your home team um, for Georgia Bulldogs uh, for that particular home file. Um, if you don't have the team set up in here, clicking add new is going to add all of that new team information. Um, same thing with the guest team. If you have it selected in the drop down, you can just select the particular team that you want to associate it with so that way it brings all of that information together. Otherwise, if that team is not actually set up, um, you can use this add new to go ahead and add the new file. It'll tell you whether it's imported the file successfully, and in this case it has. Um, so now we actually have access to both of those teams. Um, so now since we have those two game, game information set up um, and we went ahead and added those teams whenever we imported our season stats, um, they'll now show up in our team dropdown. So we can see that we have information for Appalachian State and Georgia. Um, and as, as soon as we select those, we can see our roster information as well. So we know that it's brought in all of the information. You can go through um, your roster will show up in alphabetical order, show you all the information that's brought up for that particular team. Um, again, you can configure this. So if you've brought in team information, you can always select the team drop down here um, and go into the configuration options uh, to go ahead and select uh, anything that you need to change or uh, change as part of your team. So if you want to add additional information like your stadium, uh, city, state, that type of information so that you can display it out to the displays, um, you can configure that with existing teams as well. So cancel out of that. Um, you can, this is also where you would be able to manually enter in roster information or change any of your rosters around. So if your roster has been um, some of the incorrect information was brought in or if you need to change something, um, add in new players, any of those configuration allows you to either select new players um, or change player information about any particular player that's been brought in. So you also have uh, just some miscellaneous lines of data. Uh, these allow you to play out particular um, lines to your displays as real time data. Um, and send all of those out. So um, if you have particular information like uh, facts you want to play out about your players, uh, you have four lines of data that will show up as just real time data uh, within whichever program you're using to actually display stats to your displays. Um, it may be your Content Studio program or Display Studio, depending on the actual um, system you're using. In Content Studio, you may see a real time data field that allows you to choose uh, player number 35's line of data. So that way you can play out particular stats and stuff like that, um, just for basic facts or anything like that. Um, and then similarly, you have the information um, if you want to provide position information, height, weight, any of those for the players. Um, since this doesn't get imported from stat crew, you're just getting very basic information depending on what actually comes from that team, uh, that team data. You can order these by the name order or jersey order. So whichever is easiest for you whenever you're going through and checking that you have all of the correct players. Um, one thing to note whenever stat crew data gets brought in, um, stat crew, it does require the baseball operator to always put the zero in front. So um, whenever you're associating players with um, a particular uh, player number, um, if it just is one digit and does have a zero in the front of it, so that's why it'll show up in that kind of order. 
So once we have our players and our rosters, uh, our roster and all of our teams set up, we can go ahead and configure any of our games. We can go ahead and add our schedule. So if we want to add multiple games all at once, um, we can go to add new, allows us to select um, our season, select our visiting team and put in extra information as well. So if we want to have officials or anything like that, that we have as part of our presentations as to what we're actually sending out to display, this is where we can choose all of that information. So. We can choose our visiting team and our away team right here, or visiting team and home team, I guess. Um, your start time, uh, this is going to be the order it actually shows up in your game schedules. So um, also make sure that your game information is going to be unique or it may give you um, a problem whenever you're trying to save a game. If it's the exact same game starting at the exact same time on the exact same day, um, it may ask you if you want to merge those games. Um, since they're going to be the show up as the same game. Um, so if you're creating multiple games at a time, like setting up for a season or something like that, um, you want to make sure that at least is unique in some part of the entry. So it may have a different date or a different time um, to allow it to actually show that particular um, show as unique actual data. So we'll go ahead and start a new game right here. Um, and we'll leave it just all the rest of this blank. Again, as much of this as you enter in will be is what's available to you to actually display this data out. So um, if you're wanting to have presentations already pre-created so you don't have to type in things like city and state of the particular game, um, whenever you're actually displaying it out to your boards, um, this is where all of that information could be entered. You could enter it in the DAXAS program, then you have access to it using the real-time data fields out to your displays. So once we have our games created, we'll go ahead and get out of that. Um, again, it'll show you your games in the order of the start time. So if you have multiple games in here, um, even multiple games on one day, it should show up in the actual order that they um, are going to be played out in. Um, again, it'll tell you whether you have something that's not started. Um, if you've already started a game, um, it will say incomplete. Um, and then if the game is finished, it'll say complete there. Um, and this is your actual play entry. So play by play, box score, um, and it'll be box totals or box by game. Um, so once we go ahead and actually get into our game information. So we'll go ahead and open up a game within here. Um, this can again be done from the file menu. You can go to file and open game. Um, or if you're on this uh, first starting off splash screen, you can select the game in here and select open. Um, it'll ask if you want to auto start a webcast, depending on whether that's been selected as your default. Um, so if you do have webcasting set up for your particular game to actually send out um, to your uh, webcast, whatever service you're using for that, um, you can set that to auto start. Otherwise, you can select no if you don't have webcast uh, set up for your particular site. Whenever you first start a game, the first uh, thing that's going to ask you to do is it's going to be on this F5 subs tab, which allows you to enter in your starting lineups. Um, so this is going to be the first one that it uh, opens up to. You can always access it at, this at any time during the game for changing out players. Um, this is going to be the first thing that you're going to want to do whenever you first have a game started um, is you're going to actually be able to enter in, enter in your players. So. Um, you can do this just by the player number, select whichever number they are in their order. Um, and then it's going to ask you for just the player positions as well. So um, again, depending on your rules, you may have um, designated hitter, may not, um, depending on the actual game that you're running. So we'll enter that for our home team and our visitors. And it will give you, um, if you ever enter a player that is not part of the roster, um, it'll give you a pop-up asking you to actually select a player on the roster. Um, similarly, like if you, um, if the players already have a position associated with their roster number, so these did not have positions associated, so I had did have to go through the drop down and select one for each particular player. Um, but if players do have associated whenever you first create the roster, if they're associated with a particular position, um, it'll auto fill that position in here as soon as you select those players, um, and it will give you a pop up when you hit enter if you have a duplicated position like I did right here, center field. Um, it'll give you an option telling you to switch those out. So same thing we'll go through here in our players for each team.
And you can always change your roster around at any time. Even when you've started a game, you don't have to close out of the game. If you use that configure um, up in the uh, top left corner, that configure menu will give you the option to configure your roster, configure your teams, your season, all of that information. So that way, um, if you have any changes that need to be made, you don't have to exit out of your game um, and get back into it. Um, so that way you don't have to kind of start from scratch if you're ever needing to close out of anything. Um, so let's just go over the actual game interface. Um, again, right now we are in the play-by-play -play interface. Um, I'll show you the different interfaces that you may see depending on the way you want to actually enter in your stats information. Um, so right now we're on play-by-play. -play. If we want to change this to be our box score entry, um, the view tab is where we're going to change that out. Um, again, this is also going to give you the option to change the particular toolbars you're seeing. So um, right now we're seeing the toolbar on the top for us starting new games, printing out information, um, choosing particular information about the way the interface looks. So if we want to see just home team and box score mode or visitor team, um, this is that little uh, toolbar menu that allows you to change that. This is our Twitter output right here. So if you're signed into a Twitter account, you can tweet directly from here. Um, you can also set it up to tweet to um, just certain uh, times in the game. So like if it just at the end of every inning um, or when the game is over, anytime there's a score, any of that, it'll automatically allow you to tweet out information. So if you have this set up with Twitter um, and have it connected obviously to an internet connection so it can access Twitter, uh, you can have it auto tweet or you can type out tweets from within the DAC stats program. So you're not having to go back and forth between two programs um, if you're trying to control a Twitter feed as well. Um, again, it's just give you the basic interfaces. So if you want to have more toolbars, you can select those on there. Um, as well as this is where you're going to change the actual play mode entry that you have. So right now we're currently selected on play by play. We'll go through and do each play individually. Box score by inning. You can choose to um, have all of yours just set up in box score, or you can do box score by game as well. So if you want to just have your full game stats information entered um, and not go by inning, either of those options will work. Um, again, this view menu up here or the menu in your uh, toolbar right here allows you to choose whether you're seeing maximizing just home stats or visitor stats. So if you want to see your full roster um, as opposed to having to scroll through in this visitor and home mode, um, this is the option that you can choose to uh, see everything uh, depending on, of course, like the size of your monitor and stuff like that may be easier to go through one or the other um, depending on the way that you would work. Um, in box score mode, you have the option to uh, choose which piece of the game you're wanting to enter uh, stats for. So you have batting and batting situation, um, pitching, pitching situation like it sounds, um, then game and fielding. So depending on which stat you're actually going to be keeping track of, um, as always with this program, um, it's important to note uh, which information is actually the information that you're wanting to track of and send out to your displays. Um, if you're just using DAC stats to uh, like feed a game box score uh, to a video board um, and you're not wanting to keep track of extra information, um, you may not need to be keeping track of all of the stats. It's obviously um, just depends on what all stats you're wanting to keep track of and what information you're wanting to actually send to your displays. Um, if it's something that you're wanting to actually keep uh, full game stats and get reports, um, you may be keeping track of more, but um, it's always important for communication within the system just to know that um, like if you're trying to show uh, the number of home runs for each particular player out to a video board, um, but the operator of the DAC stats program has not been entering those diligently, um, then that information is not going to show up correctly. Um, so it's just something to note that whichever type of information that you're wanting to keep track of um, and actually display out to your boards is the information that you're keeping track of. So um, just making sure that there's communication as to what actually gets sent out to your displays um, and what's being kept track of in the DAC stats program. Um, similarly, there can be issues with uh, the way information displays out to your boards with things like um, player name spelling. So we'll get a into that a little bit later on, like troubleshooting um, as to why there may be problems with kind of the communication between the actual system. Uh, so if we switch back over to our play-by-play -play mode, we'll just go over the different sections that you have here within play-by-play. So first, you're going to have your field over here on the side. Um, it's going to give you uh, your on base. So if you have players on base, their names will show up here, as well as your at bat, um, ball strikes in total, um, as well as keeping track of um, the actual uh, like 
whenever you have a ball hit, you can either click on here or you can type in um, the number, so the place that it shows up on the field, uh, which allows you to keep track of um, your uh, player information as well as um, later on if you want to print out like spray charts and stuff like that. Um, you can either click, use this field to click where your ball is hit to, um, or you can type in uh, the actual place on the field that it goes to. So depending on exactly what exactly you're keeping track of, um, you may not be using that, um, or it may be something that you're kind of um, keeping up with uh, during the game as well. Um, the, you have a line score over here at the top, which exactly like it looks, allows you to keep track of the innings as well as your runs, hits, errors, um, left on base, all of that particular information. Um, you can edit this directly, so if you're wanting to change any of those around, um, this edit allows you to manually edit all of that information, um, and we'll go through that as well, how you can change those. So if something um, gets off in the course of keeping track of stats, um, you can manually edit that information as well. So line score gives you just a quick option for you to look exactly, see the way that your stats have been put together, um, and if something gets off, uh, allows you to change those around. This next option is where you're actually going to be um, entering all of your game information. So um, it's going to give you um, essentially all of your controls. This is where you're going to be doing all of your play-by-play -play entry. So um, you have a few different tabs along the top here. Um, again, these are, uh, they do have a keyboard shortcut associated with them, so it'll say F2, depending on which tab you want to switch to. So using on the keyboard allows you to switch between the different um, tabs. Uh, it will be grayed out if something doesn't apply in that particular situation. So for example, right now, F3 base runner is going to be grayed out because I don't have um, any base runner right now. So there's no way for me to enter any base runner information. So it'll gray out any part of the system um, that you're not that doesn't currently make sense as part of your game entry. Um, it won't allow you to switch to that or change anything else around. Um, so F2 is your batted ball, so if you have something that's um, any of your actual in-game after it's been batted, whether it's an out um, or an on-base, any of that information will be from there. Base runner is, again, if you have a base runner, um, and we'll go through those, we'll enter in some plays as well. At bat is going to be kind of where you're starting off from, so you can enter in um, balls and strikes from here, as well as whether it's in play um, or any sort of issues, um, or if there's any uh, special plays or anything like that um, that count as part of your at bats, um, those will be in here. Um, again, since this program does uh, rely on uh, relies on keyboard shortcuts to make it pretty fast for you, um, there are keyboard shortcuts for pretty much anything that you can do in terms of your play-by-play -play entry. Those are going to be these little underlines um, under the letters uh, within the actual plays. So um, it'll tell you exactly which one of these um, is going to be your keyboard shortcut. So you have B for ball and S for strike. Um, allows you to easily see what those keyboard shortcuts are. Um, of course, after you've done this for quite a while, you'll remember they're really easy and it'll be really fast for you to enter in plays. Um, but if you ever forget like what the keyboard shortcut is for something like even a weird play or something like that, um, the little underline under the letter should tell you exactly what is for that particular play. So it gives you a pretty easy way to tell um, whether something is uh, has a keyboard shortcut associated with it and the easy way for you to enter it in. Um, again, the subs tab is going to be this shows up first whenever you first need to enter in a starting lineup, um, but this is also where you're going to be changing around um, your, uh, but this is also where you're going to be changing around your uh, players and game information. Special is going to be your, um, if you have any sort of weird plays or anything like that that you need to change around, um, will be on the special tab. Um, and then you have manual, so if you need to uh, change anything uh, manually, any sort of uh, issue with the way the stats have been kept track of, you can change that from manual as well. Um, so. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do um, entering in a couple of plays. Uh, your plays will show up over here on the left side of your screen, so you should be able to easily see whenever plays have been entered. Um, and then you'll be able to keep track of your player statistics right here. So um, your starting lineup will always show up at the top. So whoever is in the game, um, and then it'll go, uh, you can sort by whatever order you want to see. Keep track of your season average as it changes, all of that information. So um, any information that you want to enter in um, from within here. So we want to enter in a couple of plays and then see how we would edit those. So. Um, it's going to give you all of the different order of the steps that you need to take whenever you're actually doing information. So um, 
if you need to select, uh, like for example, if I've entered in a strike, um, I need to select whether it's swinging or looking. This is where you would be choosing that from within here um, and then entering that to actually go ahead and uh, go in and select that as that's been the case and enter is going to allow you to keep going and entering in uh, new plays. Um, but for example, if you have something that has more steps to go through, it's going to take more steps before it allows you to enter and go on to the next play. So for example, if I have something like in play and it's been hit um, double, again, you can either type in the number depending on where it shows up, um, or you can just click on the field to choose where it's been hit to. Um, then it's going to ask you then whether the runner has stayed on that base. So if it's been hit to uh, a double, but then he advances um, on a throw, you can change that as well. Um, or whether he's out on like a trying to steal or something like that. Um, so essentially, you're going to have to go through all of these particular steps when entering plays um, just to make sure that you have everything in the correct order. So um, you always have to make sure that uh, you're keeping track of the number of players on base. Um, if you have existing players on base, those need to be kept track of in order. So um, it'll highlight over the actual player player that you're currently working on. So if you stayed on second, then you hit enter, and then it'll actually enter in that play. So it won't allow you to go on to the next play until you've gone through all of those steps every time. So um, once those have been selected, you could do in play for this next one. Um, if it's out or anything like that, you can choose where it's hit to in here. Um, the sequence as well, so the actual player that made the play, um, just based on the actual position numbers. Um, and then it's going to ask you about the base runner as well. So uh, you have to enter the steps for each particular player in this play-by-play -play mode just to make sure that you know um, the order that things have been brought through. Um, if there are any sort of weird plays or anything like that, you can always reference. Um, Dactronics does have uh, multiple different uh, support resources for knowing how to enter in like strange plays. So if you have things like bulks or wild pitches, anything like that that may um, not be just a normal in play sort of thing, um, those are two that are available right here. Um, but anything is available in the manual. So if you have weird plays or anything that kind of takes a special um, sequence of events, you can always reference those to figure out the way to kind of enter in those uh, strange plays. Um, so let's take a look at uh, just basic editing. So if you have any issues or anything like that that you need to edit or change around, um, this configuration tab gives you the option to configure um, any of your teams, anything like that. Uh, so if you need to change out a roster, um, change out a player, anything like that, you can change those from within there. Um, edit is going to be your friend for if you need to change anything, um, if you have the wrong play has been entered. Um, if you're needing to edit things like just basic pitch count that doesn't um, really affect the actual way that the game has been going, you can edit those directly from within the edit tab. Um, similarly, you can edit game stats directly. So um, any of the actual things that you're going to be displaying, especially if you're displaying like line score um, out to the board, you can enter those directly. Um, similarly, if you have problems with like a particular play, you can always select the play. It'll give you the option to change it right here as long as it doesn't change too much after the end of the game. So um, if you have something set up as a hit, um, but it turns out they were out, it's not going to give you the option to edit that directly since that changes the way the rest of the game goes through things. Um, but you can always go in and if there is something that you need to, um, if you've completely started out from within there, um, you can uh, either delete last play while you delete out the last one. Restart from allows you to completely restart from within that one um, from where that play is. So if you have something that was completely off um, and it's not too far back in the game, you could restart from that play. Um, it is going to give you issues if you try and go too far back in the game. You're obviously going to have to enter the plays uh, that have followed just because it changes uh, the way that the game has progressed. So if one play is entered in as a hit and it turned out to be an out, that changes the way that the rest of the game is entered. So you may have to restart um, and go through and enter the rest of those plays manually. Um, you can always, if you're in uh, game stats information, um, it allows you to check whether uh, there's any errors in the way stats have been entered. So if you're in box score mode um, and you need to check for any errors at any particular time, this is where you can do that to see if um, it doesn't match with a pitch count and the number of strikes or something like that doesn't match, allows you to check those kind of quickly. 
Um, similarly, this is where you can do things like um, entering substitutions, um, inserting strikes, balls, just kind of basic changes, editing for information. Um, generally, the most editing that you'll be doing will be just changing basic things like single to double, something that doesn't actually have to change the game. So just as easy to just click on the particular thing that you need to change um, and go ahead and change the actual uh, what happened during that particular play. Um, otherwise, you may have to delete just the last play or um, start over from that particular point, depending on what all has changed for that particular thing. Um, so from within that, um, if we've kind of gone through our game, we're wanting to actually grab some information, grab some statistics. Um, we'll go ahead and close out of this game for right now and just see the particular reports and all of that information that we can bring. Um, so we want to see uh, season reports or game reports. Uh, we can do this either from the file menu or under here under this common tasks, this print season reports. Um, this gives you lots of different options for what all information you can print out and how you can export these to other programs. Um, so you can select your season here if you wanna just uh, see a number of competitions. So if you wanna see a number of games for a particular team, choose your team within your team dropdown. Um, and you can choose whether you want to see all of your games, whether you want to see just home games or just away games, neutral games, um, depending on all of those. And you can choose where it gets sent to, um, whether it's uh, sent to a particular file um, or whether you're going to export it to those particular things. Um, otherwise, you can do team reports. So if you want to have like box reports or uh, actual detail, detailed season reports, um, you would select those in here. Um, and then choose exactly where you want to save it to. So if you want to save or export as a particular file type, um, you can do that from within this program. Um, similarly, conference reports allow you to give information about your particular conference. So if you have detailed, um, especially if you have this configured with the WebSync program. Um, other than that, you can change particular uh, directories if you have um, detailed reports or anything like that that you want to send to a particular place. Um, but this gives you lots of different options as to um, the types of information that can be brought out of the DACStats program. Um, again, this can give you your detailed reports. You may be using outside software to kind of choose between those as well. So um, just depending on all of that, um, exactly what information you're wanting to see, uh, this is going to give you the option to choose whether you want team reports, if you want to see just basic information about team, um, or you want just individual um, action about particular players or pitching information. Um, this is where you can use those particular reports and send them out. Um, you can print them or um, send them to a particular file, so that way you can see for each particular one. Um, so with that, um, I know we've gone over uh, the software. Does anyone have any questions about the software? We're going to go over troubleshooting for just a little bit as well, but um, any questions about how we would be using this for kind of in-game action as well? I see we have a couple in the chat pod that I know we've been going through. Let's see. Um, let's see. I'm seeing in our chat pod. MLB. Media. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how that MLB advanced media, I see that it's allows you to bring in the season stats before, but it doesn't look like it does update after each at bat. Um, there may be a way to bring in that particular information and get it to interface. Um, but um, do we have any other questions while I'm trying to find out about that or at this point? Um, Does anybody else have any more? Okay. 
Um, I'm going to do just a quick overview of some troubleshooting measures that you can do. Um, then we'll stop for any more questions. Um, but this next part is just a kind of basic overview of some troubleshooting measures um, if you have any issues with your DAX stat system. Um, so here's just a Kelly, basic... did you get... Um, Sorry. Kelly, did you get Phil's question answered? I got. I had to jump off the call real quick, and I didn't see if you were able to follow up his no, question was, in the chat box there about MLB. Up. No, I was trying to follow up with that. I think the program is always going to be, um, I think it's just for entering in your season stats. I don't know that there's a way to interface um, where it updates directly from it. Um, but I can be wrong, so I can follow up on that um, yeah, well, and get back with it. Because, yeah, I'm, as far as I know, the way that the program works is that it'll only allow you to enter in that season stats information um, coming from that advanced media. Um, and then, Phil, you would have to um, enter the actual game in DAX stats. Like, there's no way for it to directly, um, like, grab information uh, every time. Um, but again, right. there may be yeah, it's, it's kind of a one-shot deal before the game. You can sync up and get all that um, standings and leaders, all that information from game day, kind of the interface there for, from MLB. And then, yeah, during the game, you'll have to use DAX stats to do all that. Um, in-game information, so it kind of builds upon that one-time download. You don't have to enter in all those statistics beforehand, but yeah, there's, it doesn't sync throughout the game. Right, right. Yeah, there's no direct, no direct connection to it for kind of updating automatically. Um, so I'll just quickly go over some troubleshooting. Um, this is a basic look at kind of what uh, connections you may have to your DAX stats computer. So um, like I said, your DAX stats uh, system is going to be connected into DSTI, which is our Dactronic Scoring and Timing Interface, uh, which allows it to feed the various controllers that connect to Dactronic systems. Um, you may have uh, different versions of this. You may not have all of the things that are um, included on here, but essentially this is the kind of connection flow from your DAX stats program into the DSTI, which allows it to um, grab that interface information um, and send it out to your displays through the actual players and controllers. Um, so the first part would just be making sure that all of those connections are made. Um, so you wanna make sure that there's a network connection from your DAX stats computer into your DSCI, just a network cable um, connected to your Dactronics network switch, which allows it to feed all of your controllers. Um, you want to make sure that that DSTI program is running. So your DSTI program, uh, the Dactronic Scoring and Timing Interface, uh, may be on your DAX stats computer. It may be on its own. Um, it looks something like this. Um, whenever you first open it up, you want to make sure that the sport drop down over here is selected to the correct sport. Um, and then your interface is selected to be DAX stats. Um, that's going to allow it to feed the correct stats information from um, your DAX stats program. Um, whenever you have it opened, um, it may give you the option if you have like stat crew or something like that. You want to make sure that it has the correct, um, actually has the correct interface selected or it won't show the correct stats. You can use this to monitor whether data is coming through. Um, if you select view data in here, and if we go ahead and open up an existing game, let me open a game that's already running. Um, Um, in DAX stats, you should, once you have a game open, um, it should actually show you that you're getting information. So you should see uh, your starting lineups for each team. Um, it, it should update with your stats on here as well. So anytime you change stats around. Um, so this would be a good way to monitor whether stats are actually getting in. Um, if this is not showing your stats, then you know that there's some sort of configuration, um, communication error between the two computers, between your DAX stats and, and your DSTI, um, or the correct interface may not be selected over here. Um, it does gray out once you've selected it at the very start. So uh, if you need to change out a different sport or a different interface, you can just exit the program and open it up again. You also have the option to view um, and then monitor ports right here. Allows you to view whether information is coming from your DAX stats program. So um, depending on where your information is getting sent to, it may just be um, like this Venus game day in game, um, or it could be this Venus scoreboard stats. Allows you to see whether there's actual information coming from your DAX stats program. Oops, sorry, uh, your DAX stats program anytime you enter in a play. So. Um, if we enter in plays, we should see information coming from that there's just raw data. It tells you that there's, there's actually communication between the two, um, between DAX, DAF, and DSCI. Um, similarly, if your system has a Display Studio program, 
Um, display Studio is the program that you're actually using to send uh, presentations out to your displays. It also does have a DSTI widget that allows you to monitor whether there's information coming from DAX stats. So it'll show you as green if there's a connection to those particular ports. So these are the ports that are configured with your DAX stats to bring in. So um, if you want to choose uh, Venus scoreboard stats, it's generally going to be what DAX stats is sending out. Um, it could also be requested stats depending on the particular stat that you're using. Um, you can monitor those right there to see if there's any particular um, stat that's been sent in. So anytime you enter a new play, it'll just show you the raw data um, that comes from within the DAX stats program. So um, just raw data tells you that at least something is coming in. Um, so there's some basic troubleshooting measures that you could go through. Um, most important is just making sure DSTI is open. Um, if this DSTI program is not open, um, there's no way for the information to pass from the DAX stats computer to the other pieces of your system. So you want to make sure that that's uh, at least open and transmitting data. View data allows you to see whether that's correctly set up. Um, uh, from within that, we'll just quickly, I'll give you a rundown of some of our support resources, and then we'll go over any other questions. Um, so Dectronics does have just a wealth of support resources uh, for you to use um, anytime you choose any different um, options. So we're going to go about a few web links. All of these are available within the Adobe Connect webinar, um, and you can download them um, or you can access them at any time, even uh, once it's been um, once this recording has been set up, you can also access them from within there as well. So um, our first one that we have is our Dactronics knowledge base. This is just accessed at uh, doctronics.com slash support. Um, so this has a variety of support articles, um, different quick start guides, manuals, um, that allow you to search for specific problems. So um, if you have any questions about the DAX stats program, um, how to configure games, how to enter in particular plays, um, you can always search through that in, at any time. Um, and search for any particular plays um, that you want to see. So it's going to look something like this. Allows you to search through our support resources, any product support for any particular products. Um, and we have a variety of articles for DAX stats. So you can always search at the top here as well to search for any particular, um, like how to create a game in DAX stats may give you a list of articles um, for those particular things. Um, our next one is our uh, Dactronics YouTube channel. Um, it's on youtube.com slash Dactronic Systems. Um, we have over 30 videos that deal with a variety of the Dactronics control systems. We do have a specific playlist for stats in the DSTI computer, um, and videos are being added all the time. So um, there's a decent chance that we'll have specific videos on uh, DAC stats that are going over the same things that I went through in this webinar, telling you how to create and edit things in that one. Um, so you can always access those um, with that particular web link. Um, and again, there's different videos and playlists for all of the different pieces of your system. So um, depending on the type of computer that you use to control your displays, um, you may have a playlist that controls, uh, deals with the actual piece of your display uh, that you're wanting to control. Um, the next one that we have is our control panel blog. Um, this has a variety of art articles that are published on a regular basis um, that deal with different pieces of your system. Um, they come from a different variety of authors, so everything from our training and our engineers, um, different members of the Dactronics community um, that bring in lots of information that's kind of specific to the way that you use your system. So it goes through everything from how to um, bring in RTD data, any sort of issues that may show up on certain sites, um, and tells you exactly how you can um, do certain things as part of your system. Um, so we have new things that talk about our new videos for introduction to the all sport, troubleshooting, so your real time are your uh, real-time data, which could be very useful for how you're using your DAX stats. Um, so just a variety of kind of blog posts that come from different uh, people from Dactronics uh, that tell you how to use your system in uh, a variety of ways. Um, and then as always, we do have our customer support uh, number that you can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year for any sort of technical problems, any troubleshooting, any issues that you run into, you can always call them um, and they should be available to answer any sort of questions. Um, if any sort of issues arise, um, feel free to call at any particular time. Um, so uh, with that, are there any questions, anything we need to go over on our DACSTATS systems? What's it cost? 
Good question. Um, and one that I actually <laughs> can't tell you. <laughs> um, I can't tell you that you can uh, get in contact with your account service manager for your particular region. They'll give you the actual cost. Um, I, it depends on a variety of factors as to what part of your system, you know, the way your system is set up and everything like that. Um, but someone can get in touch with you as well to go over specific pricing. But um, I don't have particular pricing data either. Kelly, can you please release control and then I'll go to the resources page so everybody can see those links. I can. All right, so like I mentioned, all of the uh, different support resources um, are going to be available in those web links. That file right there, that PDF, is just a uh, PDF of the actual uh, uh, Adobe uh, presentation that I went through. So um, if you want to access that, you can download that um, and go through those as well. Um, all of those different web links. There's even links as well, a couple of things that I mentioned um, but didn't go over directly at the end. That quick start guide just gives you a basic how to start up your system, how to create a game, how to actually enter in play. So it's really just quick and dirty how to start using the DAX stat system without getting into kind of the minutia of the program. Um, and then there is a link to our uh, we have a knowledge base article for importing that stat crew season stats. So what we went through at the beginning, importing stats information from stat crew um, within there. Uh, and then it's also has access to our DAC stats website, which is just DACstats.com. Um, has a variety of pieces of the program, contacts to the DAC stats um, email account as well. So if you have any issues, that's a good uh, website that can be used as well. We also have a survey on this page as well, if everybody would like to fill out our survey so we can see what we can do better for these free webinars. You can just click on survey and browse to it and fill it out. It's just four short questions. <laughs> 